let's see if we can rectify the situation we had in the last video. Our light bulb is sitting roughly right there. Maybe I can get a brighter color. Our light bulb is sitting roughly right here. So we have this nice white spot below our light bulb, which makes sense. But then all of a sudden the top of the arrow is lit. And we saw earlier, if I move my camera, the back of the arrow is nice and dark. But if my light bulb is sitting right here in the world, I would expect the back of this, or the underside, the belly of this arrow to be lit, and the top of this arrow to be nice and dark. So we're not being consistent. What we're really doing is our lighting calculations in model space. Even though we've defined our light position in a quote-unquote world coordinate system, and that's... That's our convention. That's how I like to think of it. I put the light bulb in the world and it lights everything in the world. Even though we've put that light bulb in the world right there, we're doing our lighting in model space as far as this arrow is concerned. Let me actually show you. I'm going to bring in another draw elements for an arrow. But this draw elements, I'm just saying, hey, project the arrow. Don't do anything else. So let's start this. Build this and run this. You see now we have two arrows. We have one whose axes are aligned perfectly with the world. Here's the axis of the world. That's the y direction right there. And these also happen to be the axes for the arrow and the axes for the plane. They're all lined up. There is no model to world transformation matrix in this case. And if you look at that arrow, it's nicely lit. And it's very, if I can fly around, come on. It's nicely lit and the lighting is consistent. Oh, that's so frustrating. Okay. The lighting is consistent uh, for the for the scene. Okay, if I have a light bulb right about here, you can see that this arrow lights consistently with the plane below it. It doesn't have the the issues, not the arrows. It doesn't have the issues that we're suffering from with this arrow over here. Don't blink, I'm going to fly real fast. There we go, our light bulb's right here. All of our lighting is consistent right here, but it's not consistent here where this side of the arrow is that. And what we're doing is lighting our arrow as if its axes are perfectly aligned with the world in model space, essentially. And then uh, once we've lit it, we do this translate and rotate, put our arrow here, and oh, look, the top of the arrow. Maintain the lighting that we gave it right here. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want to do our lighting in world space, not model space. In fact, let me fly back over here. Don't blink. Now, not only did I fly real fast, I also rotated this arrow because we need to handle rotations different than translations. And so I, let's, let's deal with the translation issue first, then we can deal with the rotation issue. But you can see the top of this arrow is still inconsistently lit. Our light bulb's right about here. I would expect the back of the arrow to be nice and bright, but instead we have the top of the arrow nice and bright because we light the arrow in model space and then we do a translate over there. We'll talk about the rotation a little bit later. Let me tell you. Let me show you. Let me try to explain what well, the problem is. This is our light position. I'm guessing that's roughly our light position. And then remember, this arrow is made up of vertices, which are really just vectors. Here's a vector to that corner, a vector to that corner, a vector to there, a vector to there, a vector to there, vector to there, vector, vector, vector. All these vectors making up our arrow. And we light these vectors one at a time. Uh, in the fragment shader, we actually do the calculations in the fragment shader, but, but essentially we're rolling off of each vertex. We get the interpolated data with each vertex. Let's pick on this uh, the, this vertex right here, the back of the arrowhead to the left of the arrowhead. This vertex right there, the origin of the arrow is right about here, that origin and the axes lined up with the world. Let me draw the vector that makes up that vertex. There's the vector that makes up that vertex. We also have a vector for the light position. Okay, this is our light. In fact, I'll change our light to red. We subtract the light position from the vertex position and that gives us this vector like so. But then we normalize that vector. Why do we normalize it? Well, because we don't want the dot product to give us just the cosine. We normalize it and we dot that with the normal and we get a nice bright top of the arrow head, which makes sense. But over here we, di we did a translate. We translate our arrow over and we translate our arrow up. We need to take this vertex position, not this vertex position. Yes, before the translation, this is the proper position, but we actually need this position. In fact, let me go as far as drawing the vector that makes up that position. I'll do it in white. Here's the origin, the one and only coordinate system I'm always talking about. Here's the origin. There's a vector that goes out to this part of the back of the arrowhead. I'll just click get rid of the excess. I did a right click there just to 
It's a little dirty trick I learned. Anyway, so that is the vector that makes up that part of the arrowhead. And I should subtract this vector from the light position vector, this green long vector right there. Well, if I subtract those two, then I should get a vector sentence like that. So that would be my resulting vector. But oh, we're going to normalize it again, just like we normalized, normalized it down here. So let me normalize it. In fact, I'll actually redo it in red just to be consistent with what we're doing down there. I'll do it in red. So this is our normalized light vector. And you can see that this light vector is pointing a very different direction than this light vector right here. This light vector, as far as the arrowhead is concerned, is pointing mostly straight up. And if I throw the normal in here, I'll do it in yellow, hoping it shows up. The normal at this point, we saw in earlier videos, the normal is like that. And the normal right here is the same. It's like that. Well, if I dot this red vector with this yellow vector, I get a nice bright vertex. You can see the top of the arrowhead is very bright there. The cosine of the angle there, well, the, the angle is pretty small. And so the cosine of that angle is going to be very close to 1. Whereas right here, this angle, oh, look how big that is. Hey, let, me, let me do that brighter. Look how big this angle is. Well, that means the cosine of this angle is going to be very close to zero and so the top of the arrowhead should not be lit very well at all. Let's go to the back of the arrowhead. Let me just do this demonstration one more time for the back of the arrowhead and I'll go quickly but essentially the back of the arrowhead, this vertex right here which corresponds to this vertex right there right, this vertex right here there's a, there's a vector that makes up that vertex position and there's the vector then we subtract that vector from the light position and that gives us that gives us this vector if I could draw straight but then again I normalize it because I want that dot product to just give me the cosine so I'll normalize that and then my surface normal on the back of the arrowhead we saw in previous videos my surface normal is pointing straight off the back of the arrowhead right here same idea straight off the back of the arrowhead that's the surface normal surface normal. And you can see the dot product between these two vectors. Well, the cosine, that, that looks like it's greater than 90 degrees. So we get a nice black vector. Okay, this theta right here, the angle between the two vectors right here, the cosine of that angle is actually going to be negative. That's why we get such a black color value out there. But if I repeat the same process for this other vertex position, if I had the proper positional vector, I need to do my transformation matrix on this vertex before calculating my lighting. My vertex position vector would actually be this nice long one I just drew. Okay, that nice long position vertex. My light position is still right here. So when I subtract the light vector or subtract from the light vector the position vertex vector, the position vector, sorry, subtract from the light vector my position vector then that will give me this vector. But again, we normalize it because we want that dot product to just give us the cosine. So I'll normalize it like that. And when I dot that vector with the surface normal vector, you can see there's very little angle here, very little theta. So the cosine of that should actually be pretty close to 1. So I should get a lot of light on the back of my arrowhead here. Whereas down here, I should get no light which makes sense. The back of this arrowhead, if I flew over here, would look identical to what we're seeing here. It'd be nice and black, which is right. But over here, it should be nice and lit. All because the position vector is different. The position vector right here is different than the position vector right here, which would give us a different light vector. So what we need to do in our shader is hit our vertex with the transformation matrix. And by transformation matrix, I don't mean projection matrix. I mean our model to world transformation matrix. That'll put the vertex in world coordinate space, and then I can continue and do my lighting equations like I'm used to. So that's what we're going to do in the next video is hit our vertex position with our model to world transformation matrix, and then do our lighting equations, and we'll see the back of this arrow is as lit appropriately and the top of the arrow will will be darker so next video